lecture four, we're going to learn a lot more, uh, including the ASCII character set and our first control statement, the for loop. So let's copy return C to a new file, ASCII.C, and let's emax that. Okay, we'll keep our main program stub like this. And the first thing that we will do is introduce a local variable into the main routine. Okay, this is a variable called ch and it's an integer variable, so it'll have integer values. Okay, now let's introduce the for loop. The way the for loop works is we'll have some variable that's set to some initialization value. So in this case, integer ch is initialized at 97. Okay, this is an assignment statement. It is not an equal statement from mathematics. It's saying let the character ch, which is an int, equal 97. Okay, then the for loop continues to operate and loop as long as the character is less than or equal to 122. The reason for these values will become clear soon. Okay. Finally, we have to have some rule for how to change ch. We will say let ch equal ch plus 1 every time it goes through the loop. The following statements will be executed every single time as you loop. We've already seen the put car function before. So what we have here is a loop that says let ch range from 97 to 122, incrementing by 1 every single time, and display the character. Okay. After it does that, we'll display the new line character. To put a comment in code, we simply do something like this, backslash, backslash, new line character. And we have ourselves a comment. The compiler ignores this comment, but it is really good to put in comments for the human reader. Okay. Now we'll do something again similar from numbers ranging from 65 to 90. In this case, I'll also note that the new line character can be represented with the integer 10. And again, we'll see a little bit more about this later. And then finally, we have one more for loop to write. Which ranges from 48 to 57. Okay, we've written this. Let's compile. and run it. Okay, what do we see here? We see three lines of output. Uh, the first one is the lowercase letters of the alphabet, and the second one is the uppercase letters of the alphabet, and the third one are the ten digits. This corresponds to the three for loops that we have in the code. The first for loop ranges from 97 to 102. 97 is the ASCII value for the lo lowercase a, while 122 is the ASCII value for lowercase z. Notice that in the ASCII character set, a to z is represented with consecutive integers. Similarly with the uppercase, 65 is capital A, 90 is capital Z. And again, the uppercase are represented with consecutive integers. Finally, character set, uh, sorry, from 48 to 57 represents 0 through 9 characters. If you search on the web for the ASCII table and take a look at that, you will see a correspondence between these numbers and the tables that you see on the web. Okay? The ASCII table, the ASCII character set is something that all computers nowadays use and it's going to be very, very handy for us when we want to do some interesting things like examine files, the characters in the files, if we want to convert from uppercase to lowercase or we want to count 
the number of characters and files. Lots of interesting things that we can do with this, but it's essential for you to understand the ASCII character set. To summarize, not only have we learned about the ASCII character set, but we've learned how to declare an integer variable called ch. We've learned how to use a for loop, again, an assignment statement, a comparison statement, and an increment statement that tells me how to change the integer variable every single step of the loop, and that you execute this function every single time the loop. And then we did three loops. Finally, we return exit success like normal. Okay, that ends this lecture, and we can conclude right now.